Hello everyone, hope everybody's doing great today. Appreciate those of you watching this video. We hope you enjoy it. And today we'll be watching, <laughs> uh, not watching, today we're gonna be talking about Wheel of Time season two. Um, got a little weird get up here. He didn't want to sit next to me. He says I smell or something. But uh, anyway. I get, I get a couch. Yeah. Just a wooden chair. That's right. <laughs> you get a little bit of a more comfortable chair. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to be talking about season two, which I believe was a lot better than season one. What do you think? Yeah. I so. do. It's, it's better. Yep. Oh, and then if you're watching this, feel free to leave some comments below. Spoiler alert. Yep. We will be doing spoilers. Um, so it's not really a review. We're just talking about. It's, a, it's our review of the spoilers. With spoilers, yeah. right. Yeah. Our... We don't have enough time to make more than one video. Yep. <laughs> so, um, right. So let's get into season two. Like I said, I thought it was a lot better. Um, I think it was a little bit more faithful to the book. So if you're a book reader, it is a little bit more faithful to the books. I mean, they did rearrange um, events and added some stuff that's not in the book and took some things out but overall I, th I think there were the feel of the story the spirit of the story is more aligned with the books than season one and um, the characters were more true to themselves that you will find in the books i feel like yeah and he nods his head um Nine. and i think you actually can see that they actually have more money on this series, on this uh, season, the uh, weaves look way better. Yes, the weaves look a lot better. The special effects were a lot better than, than in season one. Uh, the sets and everything. What is this? I feel like was heads and shoulders like a lot better than what we saw in season one. Um, don't know really if how much COVID nineteen impacted season one. Um, I think at there to I, I've heard. I think some of the actors said that it affected like the last episode. Um, however, um, I think um, this season, I think they took their time and did everything that they wanted to do and it came out as uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. I liked it. Characters were great. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that happened were interesting. Yep. Um, yeah. So what you, do what you think about how they portrayed portrayed the Sanchin. Do you like how they did the Sanchin? Yeah, I think it's pretty accurate it's how they were in the book. Yep. You know, some things I just I just forgot once I saw it visually, like them shaving their heads and stuff, you know, like the degree, how much hair they shaved and stuff like that, depending on your rank in their culture. Um, actually yeah. seeing it on screen, I thought that was uh, kind of more fa fascinated, fascinating. Um, I was kind of shocked about the marks, uh, like the, uh, marks on their faces, the scars. Um, seems like a Sanchin thing to do though. Yeah. Like the brand. I don't know if that was in the books or not. If it's something they added, I can't, I just can't remember if that's in there or not. If it is, it is. If it's that, it's that. It's no big deal. Yeah. It's like a really small detail. Yep. I mean, it just, I mean, it probably, it adds more to them than it takes away because the Sanchin have been known to take, um, ranking very very seriously so i wouldn't be surprised if they would mutilate their own bodies just just to prove a point yeah just to show their rank um yep uh i think i didn't really like portrayed it's like the sanchen soldiers are like really yeah they're, weak well sometimes yeah. it's like sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're like eh. yeah. Yeah, I think they did it, especially when they were fighting the Aiel women there. The fact that they were able to hold up against the Aiel more than just like a few swings is fascinating, but yet they die like immediately to some to like someone else. Yeah, well that's the thing. Like the the Aiel, they had the Aiel women, and like they can kill like a hundred Sanchin soldiers. I mean, Avienda and uh, well, I mean, yeah. Bane and Chad. Like, the Aiel can kill a lot more without even uh, can kill maybe less, but still without weapons. Yeah, but I'm just saying though, the Sanchin is supposed to be this fighting machine. Yeah, but yeah, you are better. Type thing. Yeah, well, you have always been the powerhouse of the books. Yeah, yeah, they're soldiers and stuff. Yeah, I feel like in the books, like Jordan was like very pro Ayo. Yeah. Like, yeah. like yeah, Ayo are very likable in the books. You can, <laughs> yeah, was you like, can tell there's a little, at least a little bit of bias. Yeah, they'll favor. Like, they can do no, no wrong. You know, they're no, always they do, right. No, they do wrong. 
Yeah. But they um but there's part of their culture to make up for it when they do wrong. Yeah. But I'm just yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Like an individual might be wrong. Like you have that traitor guy. Well then you have but, shy, the shy though, which are like yeah collectively bad because they're all silly. Right, but the majority Majority, are, yeah. And their like, beliefs are always portrayed yeah. as being good and virtuous. Yeah, and in fact it's actually it rubs off on um a lot of the other cultures as well. Like, uh, when the, uh, people start meeting Aiel, instead of thinking of them as savages, they start taking on their culture. Which really annoys them. It's really funny, but... <laughs> right. Well, yeah, because they kind of... They're like, you're insulting us. <laughs> well, like, no. yeah, because they kind of, uh, screws the language. They bastardize their culture. Uh, especially the people on... Especially those people in, uh, yeah, they Karian. Can, they, those they definitely, nobles. Like, they soften it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which they, one? I wonder if they're going to add those those individuals in this because they had that one girl is pretty cool in the books uh i forget her name but she was kind of like the leader of those people the, women, the, the other the women warrior thing yeah um she was the one at first she was assigned to seduce uh ran in the books but then he like she got real scared of him and then she ended up joining the 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 people who wanted to emulate there's a lot of the people. Who, there's a lot of people. No, the, the Aiel. Yeah. Well, so there's, the, there's a lot of people who wanted to seduce Rand. Okay. Yeah. Including his three wives, but. <laughs> right. And the only person they seduce in this series is Rand is Lanfear, and I think they really got Lanfear's character down really well. Yeah, she's like very. She's always been kind of conflicted in yeah. the books as well. You can tell that she was like. She's more in, she's more loyal to Luce Theron than she is to the Dark One. Uh-huh. And, you uh... You can really tell that. Even though Lanfear is in all, all eight, eight episodes, the Forsaken that stole the soul... Stole the stole, show. Stole the show. Yeah, in two minutes' time was, uh, Magidian. Mag oh, yes. My like, Magidian's character. The whole, like, the whole, like, you have Lanfear, you have Ishamel, and then as soon as Magidian shows up, it's like, holy crap. Yeah, like, the <laughs> actress who played her nailed that part. Yeah, she was I'm great. So, they added, it made her look so much better. Like, in the right. book, she, it didn't really emphasize how creepy she could be, but right. in this one, in, like, two minutes, yeah, they were, it, it made her seem like she's going to cause horrible things yeah i'm so looking forward to see how she's gonna portray this character yeah, in the if, next season yeah if they if they made her look that good in the movie yeah. um and it, like in the books like she's no joke like for most of the books um she's able to pull strings very well and yeah. cause all kinds of mischief so if they made her look even better in the movies i can't wait to see what kind of stuff yeah. she pulls yeah she is like so like yeah so like actress like that was like one of the part of one of the best two minutes of the whole yeah. show was series was her i mean she was that good so i'm looking forward because next season she should be like one of the main forsaken yeah um, she probably won't be featured too like she probably won't get a lot of screen time until like her end yeah. or her um downfall right because of just because of the way her character is yeah and if she does show up it's probably going to be for um like only a few a few minutes yeah at a time um because in the books you very rarely even see her um and when you do um someone's dying so yeah so yeah so you know, yeah because she's her whole character is that she works behind the scenes yeah and um uh, so she's, she's not exactly she's definitely one of the weaker forsaken but um her mind is the sh <laughs> it's like that one guy from um uh princess the uh, the princess bride that one guy who's like my mind is my weapon kind of thing that's what that's uh, what she reminds me of yeah so uh so i'm looking forward to her but they go. Made her weaves look really cool too. yeah her weaves look really cool really spider i can't wait to see them in act like actually fighting that would be yeah <laughs> that'd be interesting yep but like but lanfear going back to lanfear she was pretty much the dominant forsaken to this i think they really wrote her character really well she was trying to seduce uh, Ran, trying to get him on her side. And then she ends up kind of being halfway on the Dark One side and his side. Yeah. It like she, it's like she was go, she was like, I'm gonna seduce this guy, and then it's the other way around. <laughs> yep. And at the end, I kind of gave a feeling like she's gonna be more on Ran's, Ran's team. 
Because she's kind of scared what the other Forsaken was going to do to she her. Was gonna, she was going to drop them into the middle yeah. of the ocean. Yeah, but they didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't know what she was going to do to well, them. Well, yeah, obviously. They were sealed up. Yeah. But she was, yeah, she was planning on dropping them into the, into the bottom of the ocean. So, right. like, yep. that kind of shows that she's a little bit more on Rand's side. Well, she's on her own side. Well, yeah, she's... Well, yeah. She's not really on Rand. She wants Rand to be her boyfriend, but yeah. she's not good at all. She still wants to rule the world and stuff. Is it, are they going to give Rand a fourth wife? <laughs> uh, I doubt that. So it'll be interesting if they try to do a change the books a little bit to see if they give her a redeeming arc. I don't think they will. Because she's always like, in the book, she's always kind of like in between. the possibility that she might turn good in the end. Yeah. There was a. Um, I remember when I was reading the books. Um, one of the scenes where she appears um, just before you see a bunch of Trollocs fighting each other. And I think it was Matt who got saved by like two or three Trollocs. And he was like, what is going on? Yeah. And then you see Lanfear appear and you're like, oh, it makes sense now. She's sabotaging herself again. <laughs> yeah, for him. Yeah. Um, of course, the guy who played Ishmael did great again. Yeah, he's really good. He's yep. really, yeah, he's really weird. Ishmael, yeah. They made Ishmael seem so weird in this series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you can see how he's like the mastermind, and um, he's no joke, you know. And yeah. that he wants to die, you know, that does fit in with his he character. He wants to die. He wants to cease to exist. Right. He doesn't want to ever be reborn again, type of thing. Um, yeah. But um, the Dark One says no. <laughs> right. Because if you've read the books, you'll know that if the if a Forsaken dies and the Dark One likes them enough, they'll just have a new body. Right. Brings them back from the dead. Yeah, because he's... um, I think it's because he's um, in the... He's like part of the wheel. Or like at least... Out, no, he's outside of the wheel. So he can reach in, grab stuff, and just pull it back in. Right. So yep. when a soul starts going through the wheel, he can just... Yeah. New body. Right. And then uh, I think they did a great job with Egwene when she gets enslaved. The feelings that these people have when they get that collar put on them uh, was terrific. Uh, I think <laughs> she. Terrific? Yeah. Horrific? Well, no, terrific how they portrayed it. I think they did an excellent job on it. They made it really horrific. They did a terrific job making it horrific. It was horrifically wonderful. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, they kind of added on, like, when they did, like, the test, you know, when it was testing them to see who's the more powerful. Um, or to just so it was a measurement. It yeah. wasn't to see who was more powerful. It was just to see what the power was. I don't, I thought it was to see who, how much power each. Yeah, how much. It was a, yeah, but they weren't comp competing. They were trying to see what they were working with. Yeah. It's like if you were to take a knife and cut something with it to see right. how sharp it was. It was testing to see which one is, has the most power. Yeah. Um, I was kind of surprised. Well, I oh. guess I shouldn't have surprised that they killed, uh, this is a spoiler, they killed her yeah. handler there at the end. Yeah, and like the most brutal way yeah. I could, like, I was like, holy cow. Like, right. Like, she did a, like, that was a really good moment between the, between the two because, like, you could see just like the cold hatred in Egwene's face mm -hmm. and the absolute dread in the Soldoms. It was like, right. When, I, when she died, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah. And she kind of got the idea of why these Soldoms aren't being recognized is because their power is so weak yeah. that they can't be detected. They recognized. That's how they're found because there's a spark. They call it like a, I think they call it a spark in the book mm -hmm. because it's so weak. Um, yeah. Like, it's, like, not even enough to be considered... They have as much power as um, right. the queen did, where she's literally yeah. in the channel, like, a single stream of air. Right. And that's the maximum amount she can, she can really do. Yep. Um, but, so, like, they did a really good job with that. Um, I like... Um, I like it when um, Matt was uh, in the room with the dagger. It was mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah, they kind of change his staff. Yeah, at to, least for the moment. Yeah, because yeah. if they're gonna keep, if they're gonna keep Patton Fane's character, um, he has to get that on the knife. Same path, he's gonna get the knife back. He has to get the knife back. Yep. Um, um, the actress who played Elaine did a wonderful job. Yeah, and um, um, <laughs> I made a comment um, when we were watching it because um, all of the seals were in the same place, and I mentioned how 
all of the Forsaken um, being in one spot would just be horrible. Uh, <laughs> almost as bad as if a lane were to enter your town. Yeah, yeah almost if, as bad as a lane. If you haven't seen any of our past videos, we really kind of slap a lane in the face yeah. with our with our comments. Because... Well, what would be worse? What would be worse? All the Forsaken in one area, or Elaine and Aniv together in one area? Honestly, Naive <laughs> acts as damage control on like a little bit. Uh, Once Elaine gets in charge of a kingdom, though, that's when that's when she beats the Dark One itself. Like, yeah. <laughs> screw the Forsaken. She's outranked them. She's as bad as the Dark One. <laughs> yeah, destroying stuff. Um, yeah, she would be the one to end the world on accident. Like literally, just pure accident because yeah. she did something silly. Right. She's very. She has, like, the main character thing. Like, she thinks she's the main character so she can't be beaten. So yeah. she does dumb things and everyone else around her pays for it. Plays the, play, play, the, plays the price. Plays the price, yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing next season we'll actually get her meet her brothers, I'm guessing. And if Gawain's gonna be, Gawain's just gonna be as bad. Yeah. If they're gonna keep that. And Gala's just gonna be kind of annoying. Right. Um, her whole family's messed up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Aiel, I think Avienda and her two sidekicks, side chicks, sidekicks, whatever, side <laughs> were really good in this. I think they got the Aiel's culture down very well. Um, just the limited thing that we've seen uh, yeah. with those three. Which um, has them being, them beating the crap out of Avienda. <laughs> right. So I imagine in season three we'll get to explore more of the Aiel and, the, and their see people. And more friend beatings. And stuff like that. Yep. They also added the hand gestures in. Yeah, which should be really fun. The sign language in the books, they act. It was like um like a secret language no one knew about, so it was used uh, really humorously. So yeah. I'm I'm hoping they do the same thing with that. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, parents transfer transformation was great. Um, I think I don't imagine know. Imagine fighting with someone and thinking they're friends, and then just immediately killing their dad. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of lost it when Hopper dies. Yeah. Just like in the books. So, um, But Hopper's not dead. It is, He yeah. lives he's, on in his he's, spirit. He's very dead. He's, no, he's living on. The, the definition of death is when your spirit is separated from the body. Okay. Well, that's the religious one. That's the religious definition. The the scientific one is when all when you reach equilibrium. Okay. But anyways, we know that <laughs> Hopper's going to be living on in, in the spirit. In the dream world. Yep. And maybe they'll have a voice actor for him. Yep. And that final... <laughs> so, here at the end here, let's talk about the final battle. Oh, yeah. Which was fantastic. We saw Egwene go head-to-head -head with Ishmael. And then... Well, uh, more like head to shield. Yeah. She was kind of holding her own... Oh, she... she was, like, honestly, props to her for even holding a shield against Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Because Ishmael is a powerhouse when right. it comes to channeling. Um, so, so we'll see once she's able to get like once she fully learns yeah. all the powers, she might be able to do a little bit more. Yeah, when Bishamil um comes back, as he will inevitably um do, he's gonna be even worse because he's gonna be using um the true power that mm -hmm. time because that's that's his main thing is he starts using the true power. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, like the la that last battle was really cool. I liked, yep. um, I liked how they made it look where Shamel was literally just standing there, and Egwene was like trying, <laughs> trying to keep the shield up with like all of her might. Um, yeah. That seems very accurate to it, um, considering he's like a th like many thousand years old and very strong. Right. But um, the one thing I didn't like about that fight is. Um, how Ishamel ended up dying because <laughs> like when Rand is unshielded and he just kind of goes up he's like blocking everything with his with the weaves and Ishamel just stands there as he gets closer with this big sword and I'm like what are you doing do something and he just gets stabbed I'm like yeah what what are you doing right and they kind of ruined like the two big fights like we have an Indiana Jones type fight <laughs> <laughs> where uh honestly worth it though yeah just to see Rand do that it was funny yeah with the first with the sanction with the sanction leader you know i'm not too disappointed yeah. i like it would have been cool to see a guy with too long with like really long fingernails try and use a sword yeah really funny but 
honestly, it was probably just as good seeing Bran just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of using a pistol, he uses the, he uses the, power, the power with a bunch and of thorns. He, he lets one guy live, and then he just, he dies. I yeah. Mean, he still dies. Yeah, he, he let dies. the slave live, not knowing the Sanchen culture that yeah. the slaves... Because in the in the books, it's like every, like all the warriors do it, not just one guy. So it's like, instead of just one guy doing the, the thing, it's like everyone just like, yeah. all at once. But, um, like it's... <laughs> That was pretty funny. Yep. Um, and then... Um, they made that dagger, though, when <laughs> the whole time we were... Um, the whole time that dagger was on his little pole, I was just like, that that is the world's most dangerous stick right yeah. there. And every time it got too close to somebody, I'm like, dude, get that away! Yeah. <laughs> what don't, are you doing? Don't be touching people with that. Yeah, like, um, it. it's right. very... Um, it's a very dangerous thing, especially since, like, it can now melt through metal, which is interesting because it couldn't do that before. Yeah, I but guess... But I think it works well. Because I think it curses everything. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like a freaking lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're about to end this video. We won't have much time left. Well, we have lots of time. We just don't have enough stories. Yeah, don't have enough memory. All right, so uh, we might do another part two sometime later yeah. uh, in a week. Have a great day, and... Until uh, next time. Hey, make sure you watch the, the, the uh, our other videos featuring the books if you want to know more about um, everything as well because we do cover we cover all of the books and um, we have some fun there and yeah. All right. Adios. Bye. Bye.